Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having a really great morning. So last night after dinner, I just passed out. I was done for the night and I am just waking up. It's a little bit after 3 a.m. So I'm not gonna be doing a recap of yesterday's price action. I'm gonna jump right into tomorrow's trading ranges. We do have US non-farm payroll in pre-market as well as hourly wages. The market is gonna be watching those two things really carefully and that is why we do have this expanded trading range. So let's go. All right, guys, so let's jump right into it. Today's trading ranges are not difficult, but everything is going to be hinging on jobs data in pre-market. Today is Friday, September 4th. It's the last day of the week. And starting in SPY, the implied move for today is between 561 and 574, and that is from options. The 30-day average volatility is just $1 wider in each direction, 560 to 575. And the implied move on Monday's contract is between 559 to 576. And to the upside, the first two levels to look for are... I would consider them to be one level. It's the 30 minute 200 moving average and the 35 EMA. We're at a really important crossroads. We've been seeing that 35 EMA as resistance all week, except for right here where Powell did speak, but then it resumed right afterwards. And then the 30 minute 200 moving average has been acting somewhat as a support. We did close right at the 30 minute 200 moving average yesterday. And if this 35 EMA gets underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average, we have gone bearish. Right now it is still above. So we're still neutral here. This could be just a pullback if we do find support here. So watch this level carefully. And if we do get above here and see this as support, then the next target is going to be 574. That is just underneath all time highs at 574.71. The top of the implied move is at 575 and then 576 on Monday's contract. And then to the downside, if this level proves to be a resistance, and we'll know by the time markets open because we have that data come out at 8.30. We'll have an hour before markets open, so we will have a general idea of what these levels are going to mean for the day. And then underneath that, if we do see that as resistance, we have this down gap right here. We have been finding support on the top of that down gap. That is 565, and that is the gap. Sorry, I said down gap, but this is an up gap. And that is the gap that we made right after we had the interest rate cut. So just after FOMC and with today's jobs data, we could find ourselves in this gap. So it's good to know that right at the bottom here, we do have the one hour 200 moving average. And then the bottom of the implied move is at 561. Now I have this dotted line right here. And at the very beginning of the week, I did do a reading on the options on the Friday contract. So this is before the week even started and that bottom was right here at 561. This is something I might start doing on the weekend video just to see where the end of the week should be or where options are predicting. And for this week, it was 561. That is the bottom of the implied move for today. And then 559 is the bottom of the implied move on Monday's contract. And the bottom of this gap right here is also 561. So this one hour 200 moving average is looking like an awesome target. If we do drop into this gap today, bull put spreads is absolutely what I'm going to be looking for. That is a beautiful setup. And then SPX, the implied move over here is between 5635 and 5765. And that is from options. The 30 day average volatility is $10 wider in each direction, 56.25, 57.75, $10 wide spreads is exactly the way I like it. And we have $10 wide between this spread and this spread right here. So I will be weighing both of those 
today for sure. And to the upside, we have this 35 EMA and 30 minute 200 moving average. You could see that we are just inches away from having a bearish cross down. We're at a critical level with huge data coming out today. So keep an eye out here if we do cross this 35 EMA underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average, then we will have gone bearish to close the week. But if this 35 EMA finds support right here, I have seen so many times where we bring this 35 EMA right back down to the 200 moving average and that is where we bounce so keep an eye on this level if we do see support here then 5765 is the top of the implied move on the day and then we have this down gap right here this is where Powell spoke to start the week this was on Monday and then Tuesday we gap down that is right at the top of the implied move in fact, the top of the implied move is within that gap. That is just underneath all-time highs at 57.67.37. And then the top of the implied move on Monday's contract is 57.85. And then to the downside, if this level does stay as resistance, and we have been seeing that 35 EMA as resistance all week, starting Monday, the only time we got above was when Powell spoke, but then we got back down. So if we do see resistance here, then the next level to look for is 56.75. We've seen that as support this week. That's the top of the FOMC rate cut gap. And then in the gap, we have the bottom of the implied move at 56.35. Just underneath that, the one hour 200 moving average. Then the bottom of the gap is 56.16, 56.15. That is also the bottom of the implied move on Monday's contract. It is extremely common that once we fill a gap, that that turns into a support level, at least for a near term bounce. So if we do find ourselves down near the bottom of this gap, I definitely would be looking for a bullish play here. And these are awesome strikes to look to right here. Underneath all of that, we do have one more support gap. This is from right before FOMC. A few days before, we did have an up gap right here. So don't overlook that gap. Sometimes it's these small gaps that pack the most punch. And I know that a lot of today's price action is going to be dependent on jobs data, but Stupid Willy right here is showing a bullish divergence. I'm not gonna take it over to RSI, but I have a suspicion that we are seeing a bullish divergence in RSI as well. All right, and then taking it to QQQ, the implied move over here today is between 475 and 488, and that is from options. The 30-day average volatility is $3 wider in each direction, 472 to 491. And then on Monday's contract, we've got 473 to 490. And let me just get in a little bit closer here to the upside. We have the same setup as in the S&P. We have the 35 EMA and the 30 minute 200 moving average, and they are at a critical level. 35 EMA this week has been resistance. The 200 moving average has been support. And so far we haven't seen a cross down underneath. But if we do, this time frame has gone bearish. And again, I've seen so many times where we've pulled back, the 35 EMA gets right up to the 30 minute 200 moving average, and that's where we turn around. So watch this level like a hawk. If this gets underneath, and if we get above that, then the next level to look for is gonna be 485. 485 was a previous resistance right here. You could see the entire last quarter, we saw that as resistance and some pretty big drops away from it. But right here, this is July, August, and September. We did see a push up to fill a little bit of this bear gap. This is the last bear gap before all time highs. And we got rejected and back underneath that level. So 485, really big level. And if we do get above that 488, that does also line up with where we saw Powell bring the market up to on Monday, and then we got rejected from there. 
Then the top of the implied move on Monday's contract is 490. And like I just mentioned, above all of that, we do have the last bit of bear gap from that gap down that we saw right here. This was in July, just a little bit after making all time highs right here. So July 10th, we made all time highs. And then July 17th, we gapped down. So a week later, we gapped down and we've seen a lot of volatility since then. So that is the upside. And then to the downside, if we do see this level as a resistance, then the next level to look for is going to be right here, the top of this gap. We have been finding support on this gap from just after Powell spoke on Monday and then we dropped. That is where we dropped to. And this is the gap from FOMC. So after the rate cut, we got that gap up and we pushed to try to get into this bear gap and got rejected out and brought back down to this gap. And then we have 477 is there too. We have seen 477 as a resistance right here. So resistance turned support. And then if that level breaks, then the next place to look is going to be in this gap. We do have the one hour 200 moving average. It is completely flat. So don't expect a huge bounce there, but it could slow us down. It could give us a target to look for on the day. And then 475 is just a little bit above that. That is the bottom of the implied move for today. 473 is the bottom of the implied move on Monday's contract. And then we also have a little bit of support right here that lines right up with the bottom of that up gap at 471. And then underneath that, we have the 50 day moving average, also known as the two hour 200 moving average, and then the four hour 200 moving average. I haven't extended that out, but that does go right underneath that gap. These two levels are huge definitely could offer support if we do start to come in and test this gap. Bullish divergence in Stupid Willy. This looks like a really fun trading range, especially if we do drop and then taking it to IWM. The implied move over here today is between 212 and 221. And that is from options. And the implied move on Monday's contract is between 211 and 222 and to the upside this is actually a really cool trading range let me take these arrows out because we have a lot going on in here so to the upside the first level to look for is going to be the 35 ema one hour 200 moving average combo so this week we did see on tuesday we saw a gap down Wednesday, we saw a bearish cross down here, and then today we saw another gap down. So right above us, we do have that 35 EMA that has been resistance all week. The one hour 200 moving average, which has been support earlier in the week. Today, we gapped underneath it and saw it as resistance. And then right above that, we have this down gap from today. So quite a bit of resistance right off the bat directly above us. If we do get above that down gap right here, which the top of that gap is at 217.50, above that we have the 30 minute 200 moving average. We are fully bearish here on this time frame with that 35 EMA that crossed underneath here on Wednesday. So this should be thought of as a resistance, an opportunity to fade the pop. The top of the implied move for today is 221. Above that, we have this down gap from Tuesday. And then 222 is the top of the implied move on Monday's contract. This looks like an awesome spread, especially if we get close enough and there's decent premium there because there is a ton of reasons to go short at this level here. And then just underneath us, the 50 day moving average. We did gap underneath the one hour 200 moving average today and we found support on the 50 day moving average. We did not get a huge bounce off that level and that is because the momentum there is relatively flat. 
and then when we did bounce we met up with downward momentum tomorrow if we do lose this 50-day moving average the next level to look for is gonna be this gap i don't know what this gap is from i didn't label it like i did the fomc rate cut gap but we do have a gap at the bottom of the trading range 212 is the bottom of the implied move 211 is the bottom of the gap and then on monday's contract 211 so this down here 212 211 also looks like a really great spread if we do drop remember once we close gaps there is very often a bounce at that level so if we close this gap at 211.50 i would be looking for an intraday bounce here and then these two strikes as a spread would be very attractive and then lastly dia the implied move over here on tomorrow's contract fridays are the only day we have a zero dte in the dow and the implied move tomorrow is 415 to 425 and i'm going to immediately remove these arrows because they are in the way to the upside we do have this same combo that we've been seeing the 30 minute 200 moving average and the 35 EMA. We have seen the 35 EMA mostly as a resistance today. We do have three blue candles over here, but outside of that, we have been staying underneath it. And then today, we got underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average, but we have not seen a bearish cross down yet. As it stands right now, we definitely can see this 35 EMA bounce right here on the 30 minute 200 moving average so until this 35 ema is completely underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average and actually closes underneath it we're still neutral leaning bullish so keep an eye on that and if we get above these two levels the next level to look for is going to be right here where we have been seeing resistance and it was a resistance even before we saw this pop right here so right here at 423 and then 425 is the top of the implied move for tomorrow and then if this does act as a resistance if this 35 ema slips underneath the 30 minute 200 moving average then look down we have the fomc rate cut gap to test and the bottom of that gap is at 416 which also lines up with the bottom of the implied move for the whole week. Underneath all of that, we do have the one hour 200 moving average and a secondary gap right here, which we did see a week before FOMC. And then right before FOMC, we did find support at the top of that gap. So we have bottom of the gap, top of the gap, one hour 200 moving average underneath that. We're not getting underneath this tomorrow, guys. This is max pain for tomorrow is down here. So there you have it. Everything you need to absolutely crush today. No excuses not to make money. Have fun, trade safe, have an amazing weekend. Make sure you take profits when you're up. And I will see you guys